So welcome to the Build a List chapter. A lot of entrepreneurs don't know that email is still king. And we are here to chat with you about this today. So think about it, with all of the fake news and social media everywhere, even though most tune in daily, they're watching and posting with a filter. So we treat email like a real old fashioned mailbox. There's some grocery coupons and junk mail, there's some business, but we'll thumb through all of that to find personal email addressed to us. We're looking for personal letters. And this still happens 20 plus years after AOL launched. Do you remember? I remember AOL, the dial up internet. Well, that's because as a consumer, as a client, it's really nice to have people talk to you in this crazy digital world. And as a marketer offering a service, it puts you, you, the entrepreneur, in touch and in charge of your own audience. So what's, what better marketing opportunity than to send personal notes from you that land in your potential client's inbox? Maybe it's a past client, but it's people that you know and your notes get to them. This keeps you top of mind and encourages more room marketing. This is the silly catchphrase I coined to talk about the word of mouth babies that you get from clients that just love you and want to tell other people about you. So it doesn't cost you anything, which is the major bonus. And honestly, room marketing or word of mouth babies is really the ultimate goal. It means that your client found you and hires you with almost no advertising dollars spent. And it takes some time to build business at this level, to build success at this level, but it's really, really the goal. So to make this a reality, you have to collect and connect with your clients. And the easiest way to do this is through email, which means that you need an email list management funnel. So this sounds like fancy words, but it's really not. Let's get to the basics. What is an email list? And what do you do with one once you have it? Well, simply put, an email list is where you invite your per per perfect audience, your ideal client avatar, your past clients, your potential clients, you invite them all to have free content delivered by you into their inbox. And generally, this is content can, is written, so blog posts or newsletters or emails, but it can also be video, audio, it can be photos, it can be teaching moments, basically whatever you dream up, you can send to your potential or past clients. So um, what's the best way to store and send emails to your list? Well, in order to comply with spam related laws, you need to select one of the many marketing email platforms. All of these programs allow you to speak to your subscribers and allow them to opt in to get those emails. You can't just add people to other lists and you can't just email them from your Gmail. It will be marked as spam. So we have to have a clear pathway for them to both subscribe and unsubscribe. And there are software programs that run the gamut from free to hundreds of dollars per month. When you set up your account, you also set up some basic information about you and your business. And this includes the email address, that your clients or your potential clients are receiving messages from you, it needs to have your business, your actual business physical address. Um, and it needs to have a reminder to your subscribers that they can unsubscribe at any time and why they joined the list. So once you fill out the basic information, you're ready to send your first email. Uh, so let's, let's talk about um, figuring out what platform is best for you. So my personal favorite, after a lot of research, is called ConvertKit. And what I love about ConvertKit that makes it so different from other email um, platforms is that it allows you to segment your list and it never duplicates. So we're gonna go into more detail in that in a minute. But it really allows for advanced marketing automation. It allows for tagging and segmentation and autoresponders and so much more. We have a lot to cover today. So um, let's talk about uh, what these features are. So there's a lot of companies like this, um, and you might have heard of MailChimp or Active Campaign, Constant Contact. All of these are in a similar vein. They're all doing the same thing. But ConvertKit is my favorite, and, and here's why. To me, it feels like a little secret. I've reached this point in my business 
where I'd been able to hand off some of the management of my ConvertKit platform to my executive administrative manager, Miss Anna. And she's going to join me here. So thank you, Anna, for participating in this particular email and all the things you do in my business. And welcome. Thank you for having me. And please don't let anyone be discouraged by my fancy title by thinking that this isn't something you can take on without hiring someone. To make that clear, I'll let you in on another little secret. When I started working for Augustine, I had no experience with any program like this whatsoever. It was a learning process for me as I went, and I'm really happy to help you skip some of that learning process so you can streamline this amazing tool for your birth business. Now, if you choose to build your email list on ConvertKit, you're going to have access to a ton of great resources that will help you build your list. When you first log in, you will see a series of menu items across the top of your screen, and here's what you can do with each of those menus. First off is subscribers. This section is the core of your email list and where you will store the names and email addresses of your subscribers. With ConvertKit, you can also apply tags to each subscriber and use filters to build segments of users to help manage your list. Sound mysterious? Don't worry. We'll talk more about tagging and segmentation in just a bit. Moving on to automations. This is where the magic happens in ConvertKit. With automations, you can create custom workflows so that new subscribers get a personalized experience when joining your list. Here's a common automation. So your trigger or your first step, the subscriber joins your list from a form on your website. The second step is that the subscriber is tagged with subscribed from the website. The third step is the subscriber is sent your three email welcome sequence. Now a sequence is a series of emails or sometimes just one that is sent out when a subscriber performs a specific action. These actions may include completing a form or landing page, subscribing to your list, or having a tag added or removed. So with the end of that three email sequence, the automation ends. Moving on to landing pages and forms. In this menu, you can create gateways for new subscribers to join your list. A landing page is a standalone web page where you can include information on a product or service you are offering and let subscribers sign up for that information. Now forms are used on web pages that you already have built, i.e. your website, to allow subscribers to join your list. Finally, we'll look at broadcasts. As opposed to a sequence, a broadcast is a single time email that is sent to a group of subscribers at a specific date and time. This is where you will create and send out your recurring newsletter. So moving on to finding and keeping your subscribers. So you have your new email marketing software and you're ready for your first subscriber. What's next? The most common way for subscribers to sign up for your list is via a form or pop-up box on your website. Most email platforms will let you build a form and easily install it on your website. But if you want to go about it the best way, there's a little bit more to it than that, isn't there, Augustine? That's right. Not only do you want to entice your new subscribers to join your list, but you want the right subscribers on your list. Not just randoms, but people who are interested in exactly what you have to offer. So rather than putting a generic, please join my newsletter list email form on your website, I recommend creating something of true value to your target audience. Remember that ICA workshop we did earlier in this course? That's exactly what I'm talking about. This item you create doesn't need to be very long or complicated. It just needs to be something that your ICA will be excited to obtain. Here's some ideas. A two or three page PDF with tips and tricks relevant to midwifery, to morning sickness, to breast engorgement. The list is endless. How about a free webinar or a telehealth class on any subject that you're currently talking to clients a lot about? You can give them free artwork as wallpaper or for their laptops or web devices. And if this is new for you, don't worry, it's a little techie, but it gets really exciting because people love that. You can offer a free multi-day challenge with daily emails and coaching about getting through morning sickness or about childbirth education classes. Um, you could even offer them a free report about their health or about their nutrition. The lists are endless. And these are all examples of lost leaders, right, Augustine? Yeah, it's a funny term, but it, it actually describes the action quite well. This is one of those rare instances where actually giving something away for free 
is really, really beneficial because it creates the value of both your newsletter, your blog, or, or your offering. Um, and it makes the client really begin to trust you. So depending on what your loss leader is, it can also act as a springboard um, for you to follow up with offers of related content later on. This is part of that sequencing that you've been talking about. Okay, so you have some subscribers. Now what? Getting new subscribers is just the beginning. There are a few more things to think about when designing your list building strategy. Once you've created your free offer, set up your email marketing platform, and set up opt-in forms, next you'll want to focus on segmenting your audience so they get content that they'll actually love. And this allows you to welcome and nurture your new subscribers, get to know them, and get them to like and trust you. So continuing to create valuable content so that, that you know your content, your subscribers will love, makes you the go-to resource. Yes, and if your email marketing platform supports tagging and segmentation, it's a great idea to take advantage of those tools from the beginning of your email program. The purpose of tagging is to keep track of various aspects of your audience so that you can tell what campaigns, emails, and offers resonate with each subscriber. At a minimum, I like to create tags that track the source of each subscriber, i.e., Augustine creates a general website opt-in, a free report that subscribers can download, and she also holds a monthly free webinar. In that scenario, I would create three separate tags for more accurate tracking in the future. I might call these opt-in website, opt-in free offer, opt-in webinar. I also track any paid offers that Augustine's clients take advantage of. Not only is it nice to have that information at my fingertips, I can plan additional offers or upsells to subscribers based on their past purchases. Now let's talk about content specific tags. If your business is multifaceted like mine and like I actually encourage all birth business entrepreneurs to do, welcome to the side hustle, you may want to allow your subscribers to choose various interest areas, or at the very least, closely track where those subscribers are coming from so that you can send relevant content. For instance, maybe you met a bunch of potential subscribers at a local baby fair. You want to tag them as people walking through in the baby fair because they need different content than somebody who subscribed to your newsletter online because those folks at the baby fair were so motivated, they spent a Saturday afternoon shopping about baby stuff. So they're your ideal customer. Someone who comes by randomly on your website or Instagram may not be. Those kinds of tags about where they came from are invaluable in future marketing. We also wanna nurture. Once a subscriber joins your list and is properly tagged, what happens next? Well, I suggest a five email welcome sequence to introduce yourself to your new subscribers so that they begin the process of actually learning to know, like, and trust you. A simple five email sequences might be like the welcome delivery email. This is just really basic. This just says, thanks for joining, you're in our list and welcome. Then you could have a, what we call the quick win email. And in this email, we present a quick and effective solution to a problem that we know they struggle with. And this will depend on how they came to us. In my particular business, Midwifery Wisdom Collective, we have midwives and midwifery students, birth business entrepreneurs who come to us looking for a solution to their pain points, like bullying in the workplace, like not making enough money, like challenges with marketing. Hi, that's why you're here. So we want to acknowledge that struggle that our audience has and give them something that can be understood and implemented in 10 to 15 minutes. So if you follow me on social media, which I hope you do, you'll see some of these examples. The goal is to train our people, our peeps, that our emails are really worth opening because we share really valuable content. Then we send a my why email. And this email just tells your story. So that new people who might not be following you anywhere get to know why you're so invested in this, why you're passionate, why they should connect with your motivation. Then we send the social credit email. And so far, we've provided a lot of value, solved a problem, and got open and real to, with our new subscriber about why we do what we do. The next thing we want to do is speak about 
all the other people that really appreciate what it is that we do. And this is like written or video testimonials or just letting the words speak for themselves because you do have a fan club, whether you know it or not. There are people that love what you're doing and you want to tell the world about that. And then our final offer email is the final fifth email in this welcome sequence. And it lets the subscriber know what will happen next. So for most, you can let them know to be looking for your newsletter, um, if you offer any special products, if you have an herb shop um, about your midwifery services, and any other great options you have coming up. And you let the new subscriber where they can take advantage of your offers. So this is to your website for sure. And you don't have to do five emails, but it's a nice way spread out over every five to seven days to help keep people aware of the content you have and draw them into your circle. So after this nurturing sequence, it's time to introduce your subscriber to your ongoing content. And for many of you, if you've gone through this course or you listen to me on social media, I want to encourage you to have a regular blog or newsletter. Blogging is a funny word, but it's essentially the process of writing in an online journal in which you share your thoughts about a particular subject with your readers. And this is a lot less threatening than marketing, right? So I have a blog, hopefully you're catching some of that. And you don't have to take time to make big writing projects every week. They can just be something useful and interesting. I'd say three to five paragraphs is enough. And decide on your ideal posting frequency and then just put it on your calendar and be religious. Something I do sometimes is I block blog posting. So I'll write three to five posts a day for two or three days in a row, and then they'll get scheduled out over a couple of months. And that really helps with workflow for me. But either way, just get really diligent about delivering quality content to your group on a regular basis. Your peeps will begin to depend on your posts and emails and blogs and blogs and, and all your social media. And of course you can cross pollinate across all of your platforms. And then those people begin to share your content, which honestly, for less than an hour of your time, you've gotten some free advertising and that's really the goal. And every time you write something that goes out on social media or goes out on your blog, that ends up on your website and that builds a robust website which increases SEO and increases rankings in Google and of course allows more people to see the value you're offering the world. So if you don't like to write, that's really no problem either. You can create three to seven minute vlogs or video logs. And I challenge you to turn on your smartphone, turn it around, talk to the camera, just like I am right now, and record something educational or interesting for your audience every single week. If you're not a writer, commit to video. You can leverage the blog or vlog content that you create your website, and you can use it to create your ongoing newsletter. I recommend sending out a newsletter or blog or, or media or whatever you're going to call it at least one time per month, but often, more often than that is even better. If you have the time and resources, totally commit to it. You want your list to get used to seeing your name in their inbox and to equate your name with top-notch information. The recurring newsletter can be very, very simple. A short personal introduction from you and then a quick introduction and link to new posts new content, new offerings. You can also include things like quotes. There's inspirational quotes all over the internet from exceptional midwives. You can include artwork. Do you have a local artist who's doing birth specific artwork? Are you doing birth specific artwork? You can reshare particularly viral posts on social media and all of this goes a long way in creating retention and interest in your consumer. Anna? Yeah, so let's talk about one of the biggest pieces of the puzzle, building your subscriber base. We mentioned the spam laws earlier, and it's important for you to remember that you need each subscriber to opt in to your list and consistently have the option to opt out. Your content will be so awesome and applicable to them that the opt-outs will be rare, but it's important that they have the choice and that they can leave by choice. So Anna, tell me, how do we follow the spam laws while also building our subscriber list as quickly as possible? Can we import our email address list from our personal or business email or from actually our EHR platform? Yes and no. 
ConvertKit does have the functionality for you to import any spreadsheet of contacts. And you can export these spreadsheets from Mobile Midwife, your Gmail, anywhere you have an address book. But before ConvertKit will accept these imports, you will have to click a box declaring that all those being imported gave their express consent to be added to your list. Okay, so how do we go about getting that agreement before we import them? So the easiest way is going to be an embedded form on your website. You can contact your peeps on existing channels such as Facebook, Instagram, and let them know that they are welcome to join your list. This is where those lost leader offers come in handy. Offer them something they just can't resist to join your newsletter. The bonus is that this method will direct added traffic to your website while they are there getting signed up for the newsletter, they may peruse the whole site. It's a win-win. You can also learn to ask folks up front if they want to be added to your newsletter. For example, when you are first admitting new midwifery clients for care, you can go ahead and ask them if they wish to receive your newsletter. If they say yes, you can make a note of it and import them from your EHR later. But what you want to be sure to avoid doing is to just import lists of contacts if those folks haven't given you their permissions. Spam laws are no joke, and if you ever got reported, i.e. caught, it could mean the loss of your email service entirely. So proceed with caution. Just make sure you have that permission in one form or another. Okay, so by the time you're adding subscribers, you already want to have set up some of those automations and sequences that we talked about earlier. That's right. You want to send out a, a welcome email that goes out the second they join their list, your list rather. This is warm and inviting and should list all the different ways they can follow and interact with you. On your sequence, you can follow up with an email a couple days later, perhaps with a pitch for your product or service. Just remember that these people joined your list because they really want what you have to offer. This is a targeted ideal audience. So put the time into doing what's really going to serve them well. Yeah, you will need to set aside the time up front to get your sequences and automations created. But let me tell you, ConvertKit is so user friendly. You can chat with a real person and get help for anything. As someone who came on with no experience with email services like me, I can commend this functionality of this service. So you vote for ConvertKit like I do, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> So just so everyone knows, I am an affiliate with ConvertKit, and I will get a commission if you sign up. And that's part of how I make an income. I have several side hustles that allow me to create really great content for you all, a lot of times for free on social media and these various courses. So use my link when you sign up. It's here below in this chapter. I don't endorse anything that I don't personally use. And this has been such a vital and affordable tool for my business that I can't help but endorse it. So thank you again, Anna, for talking people through this system today. And of course, for being on my team. <laughs> Love ya. You're welcome. Happy to be here. Well, this wraps up this chapter. And I hope you'll follow us on the next chapter as we talk about creating your sales funnel. Mm -hmm.